Hey Wargamers, today I want to share with you my first game using the new Tau Codex, so that's what today's video is. It's a short form battle report. Uh, originally I was planning on filming this long format style, uh, but when I got to Fantasy Flight Game Center where we played our game, I looked at my camera and realized it did not have an SD card in it. So I used my phone instead and because of that there are some aspects of the video that are suboptimal. Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of background noise and stuff like that, so just fair, fair warning on that. But hopefully overall you get the idea of what happened, how, where, when, that sort of thing. Um, a few other notes. So this is against my buddy Gil, who uh, is a long-term Blood Angels player, uh, and he's been on the channel several times to talk about Blood Angels, so you might recognize him from that. Uh, I also used an army list that I tried you know, multiple different things, trying to see how they, they felt out, so this isn't necessarily meant to be a super competitive list or anything like that. And on that note, uh, it's actually a list that my patrons over on Patreon more or less decided for me. So I, I put up a poll there and said, hey, do you want to see a list with only Codex units, um, a list with some Forge World but no Yvaras, a list with one Yvara or two Yvaras, you know, that sort of thing. And overwhelmingly, uh, my patrons wanted a Codex only army. So that's what we got. And uh, yeah, both my army list and Gil's army list are in the description below. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, let's start the battle report. On the Tau side, we have two Tau detachments and one Viralat detachment. Uh, for the Tau, we have two battalions, uh, including six five-man strike team units, two fire blades, a commander with quad fusion, um, uh, long strike, two ion heads with uh, drones, and then a marksman with one, two, three, four, five sniper drones. Uh, for the viewer law side, we have a cold star with three um, fusion blasters and then the uh, flamer relic, two uh, riptides with heavy burst cans and smart missile systems, advanced targeting system and target lock, a unit of four gun drones, and a unit of four stealth suits. So on this side, we have uh, two Blood Angels battalions. Uh, we have two squads of Death Company, each with hand flamers and chain swords. One of them has uh, six hand flamers instead of seven. Uh, both squads are seven. Uh, we have a Librarian Dreadnought with Blood Boil and Unleash Rage. We have Mephiston with Wings of Sanguinius, uh, Quickening, and uh, what's the other thing I took? Uh, Shield of Sanguinius. Uh, a captain with a thunder hammer, artisan of war, warlord trait, and the angel's wing relic, and an infernal pistol. We have a chaplain with an infernal pistol. Uh, we have a squad of four sanguinary guard, uh, two of them with power fists, two with swords, and one has an infernal pistol. Uh, we have two uh, lieutenants with jump packs, and otherwise they just have uh, those mastercrafted bolt guns and chain swords. Uh, two intercessor squads, one of which only has two real intercessors. Those guys take forever to put together. Uh, and then we have four tactical squads, each of which with a captain with a chainsword and bolt gun and a heavy bolter. And then two predators, uh, one of which has a auto cannon, the other one has uh, the las cannons, both of which have las cannon sponsors. All right, the mission is cleanse and capture. Here are the deployments. Plenty of Blood Angels in back there. Now let's uh, see who goes first. Gil has the uh, the plus one. He finished first, so oh seven. That that was as bad as it could have gone. All right, uh, Blood Angels, turn one. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna roll the C's too. Hey, look. <laughs> All right, movement and shooting phases. Uh, he spent some command points to have his death company jump up here. They then moved over here in preparation for a charge. Uh, a bunch of hand flamers went into this unit of, of uh, fire warriors, so there's one dude left there. Um, otherwise, pretty much everything else over here uh, fired um, or in this direction, didn't do anything to the drones here. Um, a heavy bolter with hellfire rounds shot over here and um, didn't do any damage, to, or actually no, we got one damage on the Riptide. 
Uh, so he's down to 13. And then both of the Predators shot at this hammerhead and uh, took three wounds off of it. So uh, some damage, but uh, not a terrible amount. Moving on to the assault phase. All right, charging and assault phases. Uh, Death Company came in over here, uh, allowed me to overwatch or for the greater good with this unit, this unit, and then all these guys here. Um, they didn't do anything, he didn't do anything, he didn't do anything, Fireblade didn't do anything, but the sniper drones took out two dudes. Uh, that was pretty nice in Overwatch. Uh, and because they were part of the target, when this unit tried to uh, charge them uh, using Descent of Angels, is that what it's called? Yeah, Descent of Angels. Uh, they whipped on their charge and uh, they were able to pull a mortal wound off of those guys too. So. Uh, one dead death company over there, and then three dead death company over here. In the end, uh, they pass their morale, of course. They pass their morale, pass, pass, and pass over here. So everybody's happy with morale, but uh, we got some problems over here. Moving on to Tau turn one. Tau turn one, it was... Uh, it's pretty brutal. So um, these guys largely couldn't do much, but the uh, fire blade here, as well as the marker light in the unit over here, uh, tried to get a uh, marker light on the death company that were over here. We got one. Um, the marksman here tried to get a marker light on the death company unit that was over here. He missed. So just one marker light. Uh, that's all we got. Um, these guys, of course, pulled back from the combat, because the drones have fly, they were able to uh, put a few more wounds in here. The Cold Star and the Riptide advanced over this way. The uh, stealth team moved over this way, advancing, taking advantage of that viewer law trait. And uh, that, oh, and then uh, the Riptide moved from over here to over here, kind of uh, solidifying this flank a little bit more. Then uh, in the actual shooting phase, these two guys uh, tried to uh, blow up this predator that were back here. They got um, one wound through, I think. Something we forgot. These guys are going completely. <laughs> uh, those guys. And then uh, Long Strike finished off that predator. Going completely. It exploded and uh, took a few guys from each of these units here. Now they just uh, failed their morale. That's why Gil uh, is removing them. So. Uh, Good job, Longstrike. You did a nice job taking care of that that little bunch of guys over there. Um, but when he did that, he also put his smart missile systems into the last unit of the last couple guys of Death Company over here, wiped that squad out. Uh, then between uh, the Cold Star with his fusion blasters and his special flamer, the stealth team, and then the smart missile systems from the Riptide, we were able to clear out this Death Company squad over here. Then he uh, had Nova charged and used his heavy burst can to clear out the Primaris unit that were over there. This guy uh, had Nova charged uh, and used the branched Nova, Nova charge ability to take both of his uh, shield and his Nova, Nova powered weapon. So uh, he put his heavy burst cannon into the Primaris unit that was over here and threw his smart missile systems into the closest unit, which was the uh, Lieutenant over there. Took a couple wounds off of that guy. Um, and then wiped the Primaris unit. So uh, looking a little grim for, for Blood Angels at the bottom of turn one. I did score um, one of my objectives, which was to kill a unit that had charged me, and I scored another objective by killing a unit from a unit fully within my deployment zone. So uh, moving on to turn two. Blood Angels turn two. Uh, these guys moved up over this way. Uh, these guys all moved this way. They also advanced, uh, which were part of Gil's objectives. Uh, Mephiston cast wings on himself. Was it wings? Yeah. Uh, and took three mortal wounds. So uh, after taking those wounds, he decided to be a little bit more uh, conservative, but he also gave the Librarian Dreadnought a five plus plus. Uh, shooting over this way. That uh, predator over there shot into the riptide over here, taking 10 wounds off of him, putting him down to two wounds. So he's hurting. All right, uh, no charges, so on to Tau turn two.
All right, bottom of turn two. Uh, we're gonna call it here, basically. Uh, we worked our, I worked my way through the characters and everything on this side of the board. Uh, Gil has, you know, Sanguinary Guard, his captain, the chaplain, the dreadnought, and another cap lieutenant left. Um, but other than that, everything's off the board. Um, I have the majority of my forces left, and I still haven't deployed my commander or the, the drone unit via Manta Strike. So, uh, essentially what happened here was... Uh, I moved up here to capture that objective because that is my tactical objective. I advanced this way in order to put pressure on these units here. And the sniper drones positioned this way so that they could uh, shoot at the lieutenant over here. Uh, the Cold Star Commander used his Bureau Law trait to move uh, all the way over here, so 40 inch movement. He then threw the flamer down on Mephiston, which was hiding behind that wall, uh, and killed him, and then took, a, took the Predator down to two wounds uh, over there. Uh, with the help of, of all these guys over here, they they contributed down to down to that. He actually only got two damage off of his fusion blasters, which was disappointing. But uh, most of the work was done by the hammerheads and the cold star brought him down to two. Uh, Okay, so that was probably one of the shorter battle reports that you've seen, uh, but it still was a good game. I felt like we had fun and we got a sense of some of the strengths and maybe some of the weaknesses of Tau as well. Uh, so let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, primarily the Riptides were my MVPs. They did the majority of the work for me. The Fire Warriors really didn't actually get to shoot that much because I was waiting for the Blood Angels to really get there and, and they never did. So the, the Riptides kind of, uh, preempted the need for the Fire Warriors in a lot of ways. Uh, their output was really good uh, in general, having the combo of the Heavy Burst Can to take out the big units and then the Smart Missile System to kind of pick off smaller units um, or help with the Heavy Burst Can was really nice. And I really like the uh, Branch Nova Charge stratagem. It was pretty effective at keeping that one Riptide uh, running and, and doing, its, uh, doing its best. Then uh, the other thing, you know, I brought a bunch of hammerheads, and they were they were pretty good. Um, you know, they took out those those predators for me. But overall, I'm not sure if they're necessarily uh, going to be that great. Granted, this is only based on two turns of shooting, so I'm not going to uh, you know marry that opinion or anything like that. But the variable output on the ion cannon really hurt their overall output um, in this this short experiment that we ran. So. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Long Strike did very well. Normally I'm not a big fan of the single shot and that's why I've shied away from him in the past. But in this context, I, I really appreciate his contribution to the overall uh, performance of the army. Sniper Drones too were surprisingly valuable. Um, they, they took out a couple a couple uh, of Death Company in Overwatch and that was pretty cool. Um, they didn't really do a lot in the shooting phase though. So um, yeah, I think probably my initial impression of them being good when they work and otherwise pretty lackluster is, is accurate that you'd really need to bring a lot of them to really make them work. But the interaction of them hitting on fives uh, in Overwatch is, is pretty nice because they are a Tau, a Tau arm, a Tau Sept unit uh, in that in this list. So uh, having them there and able to contribute was was nice. Um, yeah, overall, I, I think I liked the list. It was a fun list to play. I uh, felt a little bad that that Gil didn't get that much play out of his list. But um, you know, the weaknesses I would say in the list that I brought here was. That yeah, the the Riptide that can put out a fair amount of damage, but it's not invulnerable. Uh, having the invulnerable save does help, but overall, it's still you know it only took like really one round of shooting from one predator to get it down to two wounds. So armies that are built to take out high priority targets like Riptides or Primarchs or whatever are not going to have a hard time taking care of Riptides. And so yes, they're good if you're going against an army that lacks the tools to deal with them, but if you are going against an op opponent that is prepared to take care of something like that in one to two turns, you're going to be uh, kind of out of luck on turn three. So keep that in mind too, is that it's it's you're putting a fair amount of eggs in one basket still, even though the Riptide is putting out a lot more damage, he still is a fair number of points and therefore, you know, 
you are depending on them sticking around. So there's some things in there that I think probably are our major weaknesses to the list I brought and to the overall codex that we will talk about, of course, moving forward as we start our new series of uh, unit reviews and, and everything like that. So we'll get into the loadouts and the strategies and everything like that with the Riptide and every other unit that has changed in the new Tau Codex. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, thanks for watching and of course, also, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, this video was made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you like this video, consider heading on over to Patreon and joining our community there. Uh, special thanks to No Excuses Panda, Jordan, Paul Luters, Giovanni DiMaggio, Tao Oswell, Deverson, Jared Egeler, Nick Steele, Max Harrison, and Yuhai Penguin.